Hi everyone, today we're going to discuss about um, the tutorial 6 for MA3005 control theory and um, basically this tutorial covers problems related to steady state, um, error gained, steady state error, and so on. And in this tutorial we're going to cover um, a very brief introduction on PID controller as well. So um, let's start with problem one. So basically in the first problem we are given an open loop transfer function g of s is equals to k over s multiplied by j s plus b. And there are several objectives that we have to fulfill for the first problem. First of all is discuss the effect of K and B on steady state error for a unit ramp input. So the input is given as um, 1 over S squared for a unit ramp. And the second part of the question is basically asking us to sketch the unit ramp response for small, medium, and large k. All right, so first of all, let us solve the first sub part of the question, um, which is basically asking us to find um, what is the steady state error. And to find a steady state error, first of all, we have to find the closed loop transfer function, which is given by the output over input. And um, the closed loop transfer function for a unity feedback system will be g of s over 1 plus g of s. So um, the unity feedback control system is basically given in a question. So we have to find what is the output for an input that is of a unit ramp. So solving this, we can have k over s squared j plus bs plus k. So this is the closed-loop transfer function of the system. And now the error of a system is given by the input subtracted with the output, so rs minus cs. And since we already have the transfer function in terms of cs over rs, so it's easier for us to divide both of um, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation with r over s. So simplifying this, we get e of, s, e of s over r of s equals to 1 minus c of s over r of s. And we get 1 subtracted with this term, k over s squared plus um, j s squared plus b s plus k, and we get j s squared plus b s over j s squared plus b s plus k. So basically this is our error transfer function and then we know that the r of s is basically 1 over s squared so our error transfer function equals to e of s equals to everything here j s squared plus b s over j s squared plus b s plus k multiplied by r of s which is 1 over s squared. And to find the steady state error of um, a Laplace domain transfer function, we can always use the final value theorem. So if I have to, con if I have to continue over here by using final value theorem, the steady state error equals to limit of s multiplied by e of s as s tends to zero. And we have s multiplied by e of s, which is essentially this term over here that we found earlier. 
So just plug in this equation into this equation, and we have, okay, so I'll shift this over here. So basically we're going to plug this into that, and this is, this is equals to js squared plus bs over js squared plus bs plus k, and I will multiply everything with 1 over s squared, which is the input. So let's shift over here, and I can cross the s term over here, and another s with all of these s's. So this is taking the limit as s tends to 0. And if we plug in s equals to 0, which is this equation over here, we will basically get b over k. So we know that our steady state error is basically b over k. And as you might have noticed, I am actually solving for the steady state error traditionally by taking um, the general definition of error equals to the input minus output. But you can always refer to the table given in the lecture. Um, so this is the second method to find a steady state error. This might be a more simpler method than the first one, but of course you have to memorize formula and so on. So it really depends on um, which method you prefer. For myself, I prefer to not memorize at all, so I prefer the first method better than the second. And for the second method, basically we have a first order system given by our open loop transfer function over here, and s is raised to the power of 1 at the front, so we have a first order system. Um, I'm sorry, we have a type 1 system. And then with a unit RAM out, um, input, so the error equation is given as ESS equals 2, 1 over KV. And then KV is the static velocity error constant. And the formula for that is limit of S, GS, as S tends to infinity. And then solving this, we can get S multiplied by our, by our G of S, which is this term. K over S J S plus B and substituting S equals to zero will get K over B. So E S S is one over K V equals two B over K. So you can get the same result using both the second method and the first method from here to here. It really depends on what you like. We can see that the first method is longer, but it's more intuitive because you don't have to memorize any formulas at all. So, um, back to the question, it's asking, what is the effect of B and K on the steady state error? And from the equation of the steady state error, we can see that B is actually proportional to the steady state error, and K is inversely proportional to the steady state error. So, if I have to change into a new piece of paper, we have steady state error equals to b over k, so the steady state error is proportional to b and inversely proportional to k. And this means as we increase the values of b, the steady state error will increase, and as we increase the values of k, the steady state error will decrease. So basically, that's the first part of the question, right? And the second part is basically asking us to sketch the unit RAM response for small, medium, and large K. So in order to sketch um, a response graph easily and in order for us to see like uh, the differences among all the k's, um, we need to know the effect of k on the steady state error and we also need to know the effect of k on the oscillation which is the transient. 
So the first part is basically the steady state, and the second part is basically the transient. So we want to know um, how the values of k affect the transient and steady state response um, in order to plot or sketch all the response graphs correctly. And we already have the first part um, from the earlier section of the question. We have k being inversely proportional with the steady state error. And we have to find the effect of k on the oscillation, which of course can be found using the relationship between k and the damping ratio. So back to our closed loop transfer function, which I will rewrite over here. k over s squared j plus b s plus k. We know that um, if we divide everything with j, k over j, s squared plus b over j s plus k over j, we know that this term is basically the omega n squared, and this term is the 2 zeta omega n. So that's the case, then omega n is equal to square root of k over j. And 2 zeta omega n is equals to b over j. So sub n omega n into 2 zeta omega n, we have 2 zeta multiplied by square root of k over j equals 2 b over j. So solving this, we have zeta equals to b over j multiplied by 1 over 2 square root of j square root of k. So basically we have b over 2 square root of jk. And with this equation, we know that zeta is inversely proportional to square root of k. So now we have found the relationship between k and ESS and k and zeta. So, first of all, for small k, the ESS will be large because it is inversely proportional to ESS. And also for small k, the zeta will be large. And large zeta corresponds to large damping, which means less oscillation. And on the other hand, for large k, we have a small steady state error because it is inversely proportional. And we also have a small damping ratio, which corresponds to more oscillation. I'm sorry. There you go. So knowing these two facts, we can plot the unit ramp response easily. So this is amplitude over time. And we have the input R of t. And then first of all, let us plot um, the unit ramp response for a small k, which has a large steady state error and small oscillation. So I can draw something like that. So the amount of oscillation here is very little. And we have quite a prominent amount of steady state error. So this is basically for small k. And then let me use a different pen over here. Um, so now I'm going to plot for a large k which, which has a small steady state error yet a lot of oscillation. So we can have something like this, very oscillatory, but pretty small, steady state error. This is large k. And of course, for a medium k, we have something in the middle. So we have slight oscillation, not so much, and not so much steady state error as well. 
So these are all the three plots for um, unit RAM responses of um, small, medium, and large K. So that is basically problem one of tutorial six.